Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron and today I'm gonna to be replacing the battery on my 2006 Porsche Cayman S. If you're not already a member, but you enjoy doing things yourself on your car, saving money, learning how to do things, then I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Today we're gonna to be using a different type of battery, an anti-gravity lithium ion battery. If all you came here for was to see how to do this, skip ahead to this time in the video. I'm gonna explain why I'm going with a lithium ion battery first. So why am I spending this much money? Um, that is a great question. Yeah, this battery is not cheap. It was, gosh, I don't know, almost $700. But it is super lightweight and it should hold up a lot better than a lead acid battery. And the restart series here actually have a really cool feature where there is a separate set of cells, I guess, that keep an extra charge. So even if your battery dies, you press one of the buttons on this key fob, it hooks it up to that good cell and bam, you have power to start your car again. So essentially a jump starter built into it. And I believe this button also does the same thing. If you have access to it, you can press this, boom, power. So anti-gravity on their website lists a bunch of advantages to this. The restart one, like I talked about, um, I don't know, the, they're compact, they're small, you can just swap them out. There's more real amp hours. Uh, lighter weight is the main reason that I'm actually getting this one. Higher power, longer cycle life, durability, all of these great things. Better for the environment even. And I don't know if I buy overall saving cost. I don't think that even if I replaced my lead acid battery a few times, I'm still gonna, not gonna save money. So apparently they do have a really good battery management system with it. And if I leave this for a while between track sessions, I'm gonna hook it up to my SeaTech charger. So shouldn't have any problems. So the first thing I'm gonna do, pull out the old battery, weigh it and compare, see how much weight I'm actually saving. Okay, for the real test, yes. <laughs> Very nice. We are going to weigh this thing, let's see. Set this on my scale. We are coming in at 8.8 .8 pounds. Okay, make sure you don't tip this thing over, like all lead acid batteries, because it can leak acid. That's one of the other big advantages. Okay, let's see how much of a sissy I am here, because it feels really heavy. 47 pounds, so the other one was 8.8, .8, so 38.8 to weight saving, if I can do math at all. So I haven't actually had any problems with this battery yet, but it looks like it was from January of 17, and it is now August of 2022. So it's five and a half years old, about time to go anyway. Okay, so this is from Anti-Gravity's website. I just wanted to compare mine. So I have the 24 amp hour one, so that is 1,000, ranking amps and we got all this other great stuff old huge battery 1000 cranking amps so we should be equivalent actually so i read some other people's reviews that said that they had the 30 amp one and they wished they would have got the 40 and i have the 24 so we're gonna see how this works seems like it should be enough i don't know as long as it starts the car it doesn't die that's all you need right so I probably bought this battery six months ago and it's just been sitting here. Uh, and I just got this battery tester, which I just made a video on. You can check out if you would like. So I wanted to actually test this battery before putting it in. So I went to out of vehicle and this is not a regular flooded, I know, but AGM flat plate, spiral, it's not a gel. Uh, I don't know what these other ones are. So. If you guys are watching Anti-Gravity, I know you comment on a lot of YouTube videos out there. Let me know what this one should be. So I'm just going with that. And again, I don't know what any of this stuff is. It doesn't really match up with anything on here that I can tell. So I'll just go cold crank amps again, just to compare it to the last battery. And the last one had 800 cold cranking amps, even though the cranking amps are a thousand. So I don't know, I'm gonna try this. As well okay it says it's a good battery good voltage so 
It's been sitting here for a long time, hasn't discharged anything it looks like, but uh, if there's a better way to test that with different settings, let me know in the comments. So regardless of the type of battery that you choose to replace it with, uh, the procedure is the same. You're gonna wanna undo the latch of your car. If you have a newer one that has an electronic latch and your battery is dead, that's obviously not gonna work. So there are other videos out there on how to use your fuse panel so that you can uh, get some power to your car so that you can undo the latch. So that's a separate video if you don't know how to do that. And then of course, there's a little red thing like the hood of any car, you're gonna lift it up. Now, I've already removed my panels and some additional things to do some weight saving because this is gonna be my track car, but your car will probably look like this. Just a couple uh, 90 degree turns on these two things. This little panel pops right out and you see your battery. Now there are some newer cars that have a lot of things that are powered by your battery, all their computers and stuff. So sometimes you wanna keep power to your car while you're replacing this because of course, as soon as you unhook this, no more power. In cases like that, there are little accessories that you can hook into your OBD2 port and keep power to your car, but I'm not gonna be worried about that today. All right, after removing the cover, we can remove the battery. The easiest way to do this is actually just step into your frunk here because this thing is freaking heavy. So when I pull it out, I'm just gonna set it down here by my feet. That's the plan. So we always wanna start by disconnecting the negative terminal. So you just wanna loosen this guy up and when you take it off, you wanna make sure that it does not come back in contact with this. A lot of times you can just stuff a towel down here, wrap it up in a towel or something, but one thing I find easy, just take a mechanic glove. This is one of my chemical resistant ones. And uh, it's got a little, nice little rubber coating on it. So just pull this off and slide the glove over it. It's easier to do when you have two hands and you're not filming, but just go ahead and tuck that out of the way and remove our positive terminal. Also another 10 millimeter him off and tuck him out of the way. Now your battery probably has two built-in handles to lift it up. But before that, uh, we have this vent tube. So this helps vent the gases out of the car. And the other good thing about the lithium ion, no more vents. So we can just drop that down there. We're not going to need to reuse that. All right, next down here, we have a 13 millimeter bolt and a retaining plate that kind of clamps onto the side of the battery. That's what keeps it from sliding around and bouncing out. So I just have my 13 millimeter with an extension to make it easy for me. All right, let's unscrew this the rest of the way by hand and remove the plate. And you'll see that there are different holes around here for different sized batteries so that this can hold different sized ones because by default we have an H7 in here and you'll see that I bought an H6, so it is not as wide. We've got this nice little flap taped on here so that I can uh, cover up one of the terminals so they don't accidentally get touched. Now, this is the fun part of the job. Let's see if I can do this with one hand while well, holding the phone. Oh God, all right, let me do two hands. You slide it to the left a little bit. Yeah. Jiminy, oh God, it's heavy. Okay, step one. Oh God, step two. This step I can easily film with one hand while stepping into the car. So I'm going to drop this in very easily. And you want to make sure that your negative terminal is still on this side and your positive is on that side. And all right, forward and lateral, it is the same uh, diameter. So I'm just going to slide it all the way to the right. And look, we have a new hole down there. So our plate should line up be able to hold this H6 in. So I'm just gonna put the plate down there. Stick our old bolt back in. Get it started by hand. All right, it is cranked down. 
All right, let's just crank down that battery. It's not moving anywhere. I had to go really tight down here on this bolt to get this plate not to jiggle at all. Now I'm just going to pop these off and uh, replace our terminals. You know, I just want to put the positive one on first. Make sure it's nice and seated. Don't have to go crazy, just nice and snug so you can pull on it and it's not going to move at all. And then same thing over here. We're gonna move our glove and gently ooh, get a little spark I'm placing that one back on. All right, secure. All right, with the battery in place and before closing the hood, just in case for some reason it didn't work, we'll just go ahead and get in here and test it. We can see from here that we have power. All right, fires right up. And you will notice that we got a uh, PSM warning there, and that's because we lost power. So if you just drive around for a few miles, that's gonna go away. All right, replace your panels. If you have panels, close your hood, and you're good to go. That's all there is. And I've got two of these key fobs for emergency use to switch over to the reserve on our restart battery. I'm gonna keep one in the glove box in case I need it and keep one at my house. Congratulations, you just replaced your battery and or learned about the anti-gravity battery, whatever your reason was for this video. Please give it a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you guys on the next video.